This is, this is something different. So I decided to set my bar up as a workbench and kind of show everybody what I'm doing. I've got videos that are about to come out showing me changing the color of my drums for nothing as far as cost. You just have to be brave enough to remove the lugs. I'm not scared. <laughs> When I first tried this, I didn't know what I was doing. I had to guess. I started with the smallest drum, and I decided that maybe I'll try something different. This is auto body wrap. That's all this stuff is. Auto body wrap that goes on cars, and you've probably seen cars that are like crazy gold or this weird chrome that I'm like, how in the world do they make that color? It's a wrap. These things are made to go through car washes, be in the sun's heat at hundreds of degrees every day. I can't even measure how thick this is because it is so incredibly thin. Incredible, but it's really strong because it's made to stretch. When you put heat to it, you can stretch it. I'm trying to work with moving around curves right now, but I don't really get that one yet. But I do understand now how to fix some problems that I had with a video that probably has already come out with this original one that I tried this on. By the time I got to the 14 inch floor tom, I had this down. And ever since then, I've been able to fix any of the issues right off the bat. But this was the first one I did and it wrinkles really bad. You can see it if we look down here, you can kind of see where it bubbles. It bubbled, all these things are just tension on the rods. When I put tension on the rods, all it, it went from being pristine to all of a sudden it started pulling the material because of the pressure against the wood at that point. I kept working with it. By the time I got to the 14 drum, I figured this completely out. I'll show that in a second, but I'm going to take this material off. So the big question was, once I put it on, is it okay to take it off? We're about to find out. I tried it on a Simmons kit that I, or a, no, I tried it on a DW 16 inch kick drum that I have just to see. It was a weird purple color. It was not the right color. I got sent the wrong stuff, so I tried it on a DW kick drum. I'm sure the hate is gonna happen when that video comes out. But I just tried it, and then soon it was on. I filmed that whole thing, and then I filmed me taking it off and what happens. So this is what we're about to find out and what to, what to do about these crazy wrinkles. Cause once they're in there on this, I can't fix it. I have tried, I've cut them in different ways trying to make it, but it doesn't work. But I've got a way to do it if I do it at the beginning, which is great. So that's what we're about to do. We're about to take this drum back apart and redo my first one of these cause the rest of these look absolutely fantastic. Here, I'll show you. This is one I did yesterday. It's got a ton of tension on it, but there are no wrinkles, none. Because I figured out if I put a release or a relief right under where the tension rod is, one straight cut of the material, it takes away that pressure. And if it ever lets go, you just lay your finger in here and it resets it. So not too bad. The seam, if you can see what the seam is gonna look like, it's kind of that. Not too bad. I've got it overlapping about a half inch. We'll see how this goes and while we're replacing a drum. Hey, hey. Before I was doing videos, I was going around the drum and doing this, but the tension had no place to go. I wasn't able to fix this because everything was already put together. So the scratches that it gets, this is as hard as scratches as I've seen. This is stands and stands are my <laughs> stands hitting this. So it's actually not too bad. I haven't really tried to clean it, so I don't really know. But bucks. <laughs> there we go. Here we go. Let's do it. Okay. So now that all the lugs are off and everything's out, and it's just the shell. This thing weighs nothing absolutely nothing so here's a look if you can see what's going on with this and you can kind of see where it was pulling on these 
it was pulling right under where it needed to pull and that's why it was doing this I couldn't fix these because of the way this drum was built so I wish it was a single one but I'm not sure that would have been better or not because the weight of the lugs all together seemed to add to this the sound of the shell killing the resonance doesn't seem to do it it's adding weight and then it makes the resonance work I, I don't know if that's I don't know it's just the way it seems to sound to my ears let's take it apart so I guess I'm just gonna peel this off I've never really done one that's been on in a long time and this one's been on a while since I first did one of these I think I'm gonna go to the trusty Zacto knife exactly what exacto <laughs> I guess this is a pilot episode of Chad's workbench. <laughs> the double deuce workbench. There we go. Okay. Wow. Here we go. We'll go to this one. Because I cut some of these so it's not going to come off easy. If it's like there's tin foil underneath this to give it that metallic undercolor, but it's still the matte finish so it doesn't glare in the lights. Hey, drum company. Here we go. <laughs> wow, that's very cool. There's not sticky at all. Here we go. Let's take it off. I'm going to kind of roll this because I'll never be able to do it without tearing it. So we're going to roll it off. Very cool. Very fun color. Here's a side story. <laughs> My first drum set cost me a hundred bucks that I found in the local paper. I found a drum set and I wanted to play because I had already kind of been playing and I had only had a snare drum that was my sister's and an old tambourine that was my mom's from the 60s and a pair of her old Ludwig drumsticks that came in that UFO case. That was all I had for drums and I was going to practice trying to play. They were giving me Minneapolis funk and they were giving me Duran Duran. I heard drums as Journey. <laughs> so I got my first drum set. It's this terrible brown color. I'll try to find it and throw it up. My dad knew that I was really loving to play and he was big into trying to make things better for me. So we took that crazy drum set, refinished it with a lacquer one weekend. And all of a sudden my drums were this very cool white and I was so impressed and I was so happy they were white because all I wanted was white pearl drums when I was a kid because of Mike Baird. Mike, if you ever see this, man, you're nuts. But I love the way you play. No sticky at all. Nothing on my hands as I'm rubbing into this stuff. This is different. You could change, as long as you're not afraid to unscrew your hardware, and just take your time so you don't strip out any of that stuff. It's hard to fix if you strip it out. But you can change the color of your kits. And I'm about to, the way this is going, and it's going to go back on. I know what it looks like when it's finished now. And I won't have these issues, so I won't be in, have to always touch this up before a video to make it kind of look okay for, you know, 10 minutes while I'm recording. Fantastic. I've ordered the stuff. I think I'm going to do this on a whole complete DW kit. It's The hate is going to be there. I know it's going to be there and it will be fun. And I will have two DW kits instead of them being the same color. They will be two different colors. That sounds like a fun thing to me. I've kind of worked that stuff out. But that right here, not sticky at all. Like... I can run a microfiber over this. No sticky. Nothing. Oh well, let's suit up. Let's put some uh, sticky stuff on. 
Okay, here we go. I just found out that I don't have enough of this to do this in one piece, so I'm having to separate this into two pieces, so I'm gonna have two seams. That sucks. <laughs> but I'm gonna have to figure this out and try to figure out the best way to make the seams hide. So I'm gonna hide this under where the lugs are gonna go. That's really it. I've got this piece cut down and sized a little under the rim, so I don't have a problem with it touching the head. Stretch it around the drum. If you to do the circumference of your drum to know the actual real one if I had enough material. It's pi, 3.14 times the diameter of your drum, so 10 times 3.14. So that's kind of what this is. But that's how you get your length. So if when you're cutting this, pi times your diameter. That's all you have to do and that'll give you plenty. And then if you want to add a half inch to that, you can always have enough to overlap. The links, I've done this a couple of different ways. I've done this long on both sides. I've done this exact where it is like this one and I've cut it short where it's almost a half inch under so the rim of the head never even touches this because I was worried about bubbling but that never was a problem. This one I'm going to leave where it's just a, an eighth inch reveal on both sides and try to make it all the way around the drum without it getting out of line and that's hard. This is what was really hard. It does stretch so if you lightly heat it with a, a heat gun you can kind of turn the material and it'll stretch and the bubbles will come out. The bubbles come out with this crazy thing right here. Okay, here comes the happy little trees. It's away. <laughs> All right, so we know where we are. That should be lining up. Now the air bubbles come out. The squeegee they send you with this stuff just takes everything right out. And this is fast. If you've ever covered a drum, I'm sitting here looking at my first kit I ever covered. The material cost when I did that was probably, I think I paid like 400 bucks to buy all the material to cover that because that's a lot of material for a sparkle finish at the time, which was an upcharge. I understand it's a complicated finish <laughs> if you cut one apart you kind of see why that took me hours and hours and i did it again on a different kit and same thing it was just so long between drying but for all the different contact cement because you got to buy the right one or it burns that material this was a fluke just to be goofy and it's become a, and it's become something that's very cool Ooh, I'm getting out of, I'm getting out of line. Not good. If I get out of line, it's okay. I'll show you why. This is this weird AMSR thing, kind of like Bob Ross. As he's painting, you can hear the canvas. I like to talk about little squirrels. Just divine creatures. Just happy little <laughs> trees that make drums. Ooh, here we go. Thank you, Miss Maple Tree, for making this beautiful drum. Oh, I went over just a hair. I'll fix that. I got off. I got off. So this is a happy little accident we're enjoying today. <laughs> Run around the whole edges. There we go. Now we just have a patch. There we go. Patch. Stuff's so easy to cut. But it's at the same time, it's hard to get in there and get it started. I think that's why it doesn't tear very much. And it's hard to tear. Grabbing it by your hands, you won't really tear this unless you can kind of get you know, into it. Bubbles always just push to the edge.
now it's trimmed up. The next thing I'm trying to do is find all the holes. Push with your thumb. That's it. Super easy. Gotta make sure the edges are good. Okay, I need to talk about this. I think I might have figured out what it is. When it pulls against the material right here, it's because the lug was pushed down. I was screwing them down, so gravity is working against me. The holes in this drum are drilled a little too big, so they, they pull the material when it pulled the shell tight. This lug has to be pushed all the way to the top and then tightened up. That seems to be what it is. The other drums, I went and looked at how they were. Those drums are drilled so exact, the lug did not move. So there's a huge difference because there's only a few places that are still a little funny, but other than that, that's not too bad. That was a great way to fix that. So that's exactly how I'm gonna do that. So here we go, hey. hey. 